Hey everybody, this is Mike. Welcome back to the shop. Um, this is just going to be a quick, short little video, um, so you won't listen to me talk much. Um, but I want, there's not a lot of information out there. A lot of people talk, especially on the Duramax forums and, and a lot of the forums for that matter, they talk about performing return rate, uh, return flow rate tests, but there's not really a lot of good videos out there on how to do it. I don't know why. Um, my personal thinking is, is once you get to the point where you determine it's injectors, why test them? Just throw new injectors in it. And that could very well be. Um, I, I like to be a little more um, precise than that. I want to know which injectors to replace. And if myself or the customer or whatever decides they want to replace them all, they'll, they'll have that option. But on the LB7s especially, when you get down to a couple, one or two per head, you might as well do them all. Because if you, if you can have another one fail and another one fail, another one fail, every time it's the same amount of work to get down into them. And it is very labor intensive. So um, on, the, on the later LY, LBZs, and then the LMMs, they're not quite as bad because the injectors are accessed uh, externally. Um, they're not quite as invasive as the LB7, but um, still, I'm going to show you how to properly diagnose and test the return rates. Um, a lot of people say to check your balance rates. Balance rates are, are, are a, a piece of data, just like the, what I'm going to show you here. It's data that you can use to, to determine the actual problem. Um, balance rates are not the end-all, be-all Nail, nail in the coffin, if you will, for injectors. And sometimes you, you, it could be injectors and your balance rates will look good. They'll be plus or minus two or whatever, or, you know, under that four range. I believe it's four in park, six in, in, in drive. But if all of your injectors are failing equally, they're all contributing equally, those balance rates are going to be fairly close and, and pretty close to being, to, to being ideal. So don't use balance rates as a... Um, you know, you know, boom, there's my problem. I've got to replace my injectors. It's, it, it's more prevalent if you have one or two injectors out of sync to be able to pinpoint them, figure out, okay, it's this, you know, cylinder number three isn't contributing as much, so it's having to add a little bit more. You know, th th that's what they're, they're, they're good for is looking for those anomalies. Um, so don't get too hung up on balance rates. That's just another piece of the puzzle, if you will. Um, now, the C, uh, uh, if you want to check overall, what we did is we went ahead and disconnected the line at the back, coming out of the, oil, the, the fuel cooler, going back to the tank, and we checked there, and we had about 100 milliliters, which is right at the max of what's allowable. You figure about two ounces for um, two ounces for your CP3 pump, which is about 60 milliliters, and then I think the serviceable limit from GM is 16 millimeter, millimeter, milliliters per bank, so four milliliters per injector. Um, so if you've, if you've got everything right at the max, you're gonna be in that 100. But there again, don't get too hung up on that. You could be at 65 going, great, I'm, I'm, I'm looking good, and only maybe 30 of that be the CP3 and the rest be injectors, and you're, you have injectors failing. So that, there again, it's just another piece of the puzzle, and that's pretty easy to check. You just disconnect your line going into the tank from the cooler, uh, or back at the cooler, and you can check it there. Uh, I'll show you which fuse to pull in the, uh, really in the fuse panel here um, to disable the FICM, the fuel injection control module. Then you crank it for 15 seconds and you measure into a beaker what your um, uh, volume is. So um, we've already done that, determined we had a problem up front. We automatically dismissed injectors because we just put injectors in this uh, a little over a year, about a year and a half ago. Well, coming up on April will, be, April will be two years, but so 20 months probably, eight, 19 months, um, we did injectors on it. So immediately we dismissed injectors. Um, went to the CP3 and we was getting out about 60 milliliters, so right at the max. <coughs> My son opted to go ahead and put a CP3 in. It seems how the truck has 260,000 miles on it. Um, we did. We put a CP3 in it. Um, it wasn't the only problem. It was part of the problem because this, it, it got better. The symptom got better. It was an extended crank. But um, upon further investigation, you'll see with the tests here what we come up with. But um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how we broke it down to test the CP3 and each bank individually. And then we'll go get down into the injectors and we'll show you how I test each bank of four with the, the test kit. Um, to determine exactly which injectors have high return have high return flow rates. So let's go over and I'll show you which fuse to pull. 
All right, we're here at the electrical uh, center at the driver's side um, fender just behind the battery. So you've got your two relays here. This is your ignition driver uh, relay. I believe this is relay one. Right at the top of here, there's a 25 amp fuse. It's right between these two relays right there. That's the one you want to pull that disables the uh, FICM so it doesn't try to fire your This ejectors. is the kit I use. It's the uh, Kent Moore. Um, part number is a J-45873. Um, I believe this is the same kit that your uh, GM dealerships use. Um, this, is a, this is a nice high-end kit. Um, I recommend you get, don't waste, again, don't waste time on a, a cheapy $30, $40 set. It's going to cause you frustration in the end. Um, this one's quite a bit more expensive. These sets uh, are in the six to $700 range. Um, it's kind of hard to justify that for a one-time shot, but, you know, if you can get, it, get to where you go in with your buddies or something, or, um, I don't know, look around, maybe see if you can rent one. Um, but other, anyway, this, this has been a good kit for me. I've really enjoyed this one. It's a good quality one. Um, but like I said, just be leery of the inexpensive ones. They, they have different funky set uh, adapters that thread into the injectors. And some of them just push in with an O-ring seal. They leak all over the place. It's hard to get an accurate reading. And you're really doing yourself a disservice after you've gone through all this work to get to the injector, especially on an LB7. Um, these have got the nice... Um, brass fittings with the O-rings to thread in. Um, also have the lines for the pump and then the two that thread into the head where you um, undo the, the line from the, from the out exterior of the head and you can thread these right in and run them into a couple of them. So that's how I'll show you how we checked the uh, um, CP3 and the each bank going forward. So and then I also have the um, adapters to, to cap off the high pressure side, um, which I, a lot of times I'll thread those on when I'm working on uh, the engine just so I don't uh, get a bunch of crap in there. But again, this is a good kit. Um, the cheapy ones, there's, there's some that are better than others. I, I'm not going to give any recommendations because I've seen some that aren't bad and I've seen some that are just outright junk. So, and they'll, they'll chase, have you chasing your tail and frustration and piss and diesel all over the place. So just be leery. Um, Okay, let's go over and do some tests next. So we've got everything hooked up to do the uh, injector fuel return test. And basically what we've done from here is we've broken it down into driver's head is this going to be this vial, passenger head is this vial, and down over here is the CP3. So um, the way I connected this in is this back line goes back to the back of the driver's head to the return line and I've got a, it, it's, I took the banjo bolt out, put a straight fitting in with the hose coming out so that any return coming off of the driver's head does not go back into the common return line and skew the test. The other line, I took the CP3 line off, hooked in this hose to measure straight off the CP3, this other line goes into the off this manifold here by the pressure relief valve, the, the fuel rail pressure relief valve, and that should register what's coming off the passenger head because we've not disturbed the fitting or anything down over here on the passenger head. So again, just for a recap, CP3 goes is dumping into this vial, and we want to see no more than two ounces in that one, which is about 60 milliliters, and then. Um, the line back here, the back of the driver's head, is feeding into this vial, and this vial over here is coming off the passenger head. So we're going to crank now for 15 seconds, and we're going to see what we end up with. Okay, go ahead and crank. Okay, there's 15 seconds. So we will check the C, what's in the CP3 first. So the CP3 put about 25 milliliters in is all, so that's perfectly within okay, spec. And here are the driver's head 
and the pastor's head. Driver's head on the, is on the right in the, in the picture here, and it looks like 12 milliliters, and the passenger side is 15 milliliters. So both banks fail there. So we probably got one injector on, I, on, I, on either bank that is uh, passing too much return flow through an injector. So I'm, I'm guessing we're going to have one in each. Now, when we run a balance rate test, cylinder number two was positive about 1.4, 1.6, and cylinder five was positive about 0.4. Actually, to one, uh, it was positive one. So we're suspecting everything else was in the minuses. So um, we're suspecting two and five when we get the rocker boxes and everything disassembled and we do the individual tests. We're going to see if those two, we're going to scrutinize those two injectors and see if they uh, match what our balance rates were showing. Again, balance rates don't tell the whole story, but when you combine them with all the other data, um, they will usually, especially if you have two injectors that are outside the norm. If you have all eight injectors failing, your balance rates aren't going to really tell you much because they're all contributing equally or failing equally rather. But if you have um, uh, an anomaly to, or two, then you can have two injectors that are basically, um, the other cylinders are trying to, or those ones are having to add a little bit more fuel to compensate for the leakage. So we are going to see if the data um, from those uh, PIDs support what the actual flow test results are. So stay tuned. All right, so I've got my uh, return, flow, return flow rate tester set up. So I've got my four beakers set up here, and I've got my four lines threaded into the return lines of the injectors. I've got the return um, uh, daisy chain line removed. So fill cylinder number two, four, six, and eight, and they go up into the beakers. Now, the beakers, I've got fuel in them, but I had to add a little bit to each one. Once I got all the air, I had to crank it about four times to get fuel through all the lines to where they were all dripping into the beakers. Um, cylinder number four raised pretty quickly, so I definitely have an issue there. Two, six, and eight were a little slower, but what I did is I had to add some fuel because the graduation started at 10, which is up about a half, three eighths, about a half an inch from the bottom of it. So I had to add some and took a reading on all of them, just wrote the number down and used that as my baseline. And then for each crank for 15 seconds, I'll take another reading and the difference is actually what that cylinder flowed or what that injector flowed rather. So we're gonna go ahead and crank here and I'll see if I can kind of focus on the beakers there. Um, and like I say, you can see the beakers are at about, oh, we're looking for a difference. So the first cylinder two is at about 43, cylinder four is at about 43, and then we've got cylinder six at 20, cylinder eight is at 17. So we're going to look at, we're going to do a, 20, a 15 second cranking test, and then we will look at the difference. Okay, go ahead and crank, bud. So we crank for 15 seconds. Now we're going to go ahead and let the um, bubbles kind of dissipate in the fuel a little bit so we can get an accurate reading and we will uh, look at the differences. Okay, so on that test, um, cylinder, number, or cylinder number two was at 45 for a gain of two milliliters. Cylinder two is 48 for a gain of five milliliters. So that was definitely a fail. Cylinder number six is at 23. Three, so gain of three milliliters, and number eight is 19 for a gain of two. And this we did four tests, and after we got our baseline reading with the uh, fuel in there, and they're all um, almost they're all spot on. So we've got cylinder number four that's failed the uh, return flow test on this on this this bank. So now we're going to unhook everything 
and move over to the passenger bank and do the exact same thing. So here we are set up on the passenger side now. Um, we dumped a little bit of the fuel out of the vials and we've cranked just enough to get each line um, all the air worked out and fuel into each line dripping into the beakers or the vials and automatically we noticed one and five are flowing quite a bit more than um, three and seven so those are going to be subject right there okay here we're going to crank for 15 seconds and then measure we've already met, we've already registered all the weather reading so now we're looking for a difference okay go ahead and crank it Wow, one and three are almost a steady stream. All right, so we found, obviously we can see it, but um, sonar number one, there was a four milliliter diff, uh, gain. Sonar number three was two. Sonar number five was five, so that one's definitely bad. So one and five, definitely. And then seven was a, about a three, maybe two and a half to three, so. There's our two suspect ones, one and five on the passenger side, and four definitely on the uh, driver's side. So those are bad injectors. All right, well, I hope you found that helpful, um, diagnosing, breaking it down to the, each individual component, uh, or excuse me, the, uh, each bank, and then each individual injector. So again, this qu quick little video, there's not a lot of them out there that I could find that went this deep into flow rate uh, tests on uh, Duramax. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you wanna see more videos like this, uh, let me know in the comment box and thanks for watching.